Hello, this is Jörn from the MBB Offer Machine speaking. So in the next couple of minutes, I will explain what is needed for you to maximize your chances to break into the world's most prestigious strategy consulting companies. So are you ready? Because I am. So let's go. Let me start with the following. So throughout the last three and a half years, we have helped more than 350 of our mentees to receive more than 500 MBB offers. So offers from McKinsey, the Boston Consulting Group, and Bain and & Company. And if we add up their salary, we land in between 35 and um, 40 million US dollars that they are getting paid every single year. And in addition to this, on their way breaking into the MBBs, our mentees collected more than 1,000 offers from lower tier consultancies. So um, Carney, Strategy and Oliver Wyman, Roland Berger, EY Parthenon, um, and the likes. And in fact, what I will discuss in the next couple of minutes is based on several thousand of data points we have collected throughout the last decade from mainly two perspectives. So from perspective one, being a seasoned interviewer and also senior consultant working for McKinsey and the Boston Consulting Group and perspective two, from the learnings of the more than 500 MBB offers and the more than 1000 lower tier consultancy offers our mentees have received. So, I mean, while we could speak about this topic for hours, um, let's make sure to keep this really short and precise for you, right? So here are the five most important lessons that could really make the difference for you in whether you indeed will receive an offer from one of the world's most prestigious strategy consultancy or not. So let's go. So lesson one, um, big names on your CV or great connections of your parents or relatives might increase the chance that you will get invited, but it will not. And let me repeat this. It will not increase the likeliness to receive an offer at the end. The truth is we have met a lot of overly self-confident or even arrogant people in the last decade. And many of them firmly believed that their previous experiences at a target school or their parents' connections would make sure that they will receive an offer from one of the top strategy consultancies. But be assured, this is not the case, right? So, I mean, yes, again, without a doubt, if you have a degree from a target school or if you have relevant connections, it is definitely easier for you to get an invite, right? However, all prestigious consulting companies, um, especially strategy consulting companies, have found ways to ensure that in the end, your evaluation is only performance-based, right? And that means either you are able to deliver in these roughly 60 minutes interviews or you are not, period. And by the way, this should be seen as great news for everyone who has not attended a target school, right? Or who has no parents with great connections. Because as soon as you have received an invite for interviewing with the top strategy consulting company, things like connection or the prestige of your school and so on do not matter anymore, right? So, I mean, please take this seriously and make the most out of your chance. Because believe me, if you have been invited, you can absolutely make it in, right? So if you fail, please blame yourself and not your background. Lesson two, studying for years at a university to have a great career later, but then only preparing a few days for your dream job is plain stupid. So every single week we are getting messages from a certain group of, of, of people that are reaching out to see if they qualify to work with us. 
And these messages are going along the lines of, hey, guys, I have my McKinsey interview lined up next week. So could you please support me? Right. So my biggest concern is my mental mouth. But don't worry, right? Don't worry. I've done uh, already 120 cases uh, with my peers from my school. And I also know the process from the previous years. So only a bit of fine tuning is needed for me. And when reading a message like this, I'm honestly not sure if I should laugh or cry, right? So usually we, we are just shaking our heads in pure disbelief, right? So why? I mean, why on earth would you do this to yourself and to your career? especially after you have invested an enormous amount of resources in your education in terms of time, often many years, and also in terms of financial resources, right? Um, often like tens or even hundreds of thousands of US dollars. So, and even with the statement, right? With this message they are sending to us, many things are wrong, right? So let's for a moment not even speak Speak about that if someone has done more than 100 cases already or has bombed uh, his or her interviews in the previous years, doing more of the same type of preparation might not be the smartest idea possible, right? It is like realizing what you are doing is not working to then only doubling down your efforts doing the same thing harder, right? And also, let's not even speak about that practicing with random peers is the opposite of a systematic way of improving. So this is rather like the blind leading the blind, right? And why would you believe that your, 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 your classmate is a good indicator for whether you will make it in, in your interviews or not? And also, and let's not even speak about that mental math is a hugely hyped term by people not knowing what is actually assessed in these interviews, right? And focus. So yes, you will need to do math, right? And yes, I mean, you will need to do calculations and you should practice these. But what most candidates are lacking is to explain and align the quantitative approach and then interpret the results in the light of the case question asked. So, they are treating the calculations like these would be isolated tasks they need to perform. And that's wrong. And in case it's not clear, structuring and aligning your quantitative approach has zero, zero to do with your mental math abilities. But I mean, let's come back, right? Let's for the moment just see the relation. So does it really feel right to spend years to get a degree and only days or a few weeks to break into your dream job. So make up your own mind here. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm also fully aware that in uh, life sometimes is a little bit more complex than this, right? So for example, especially with regards to the on-campus recruiting in the US, there is a certain trade-off involved here. And that is, you need to decide if you um, either want to be fully prepared by the time you are reaching out to apply and you have no complete guarantee that you will receive an interview invite or if you rather would like to wait until you get an invite but then you do not even have enough time anymore to prepare yourself right so however if breaking into one of the world's leading strategy consultancies um, it is indeed a top priority for you, then option two is just not very intelligent, right? Because then there's only a downside, even if you have been invited. But I mean, just make sure to get explicit here. So if you're really serious and open to transforming the way you are approaching strategic questions, you would need to plan for at least one or two months with the right guidance by your side. Lesson three, this is not an oral exam. Nobody is interested in how well you can learn things by heart. So learn to think and take your interviewer along instead. So please listen and listen careful because for, I would say 80% of the viewers, this will be new information. A framework is never a structure. I repeat, a framework is never a structure.
right? Throwing framework buckets at the interviewer is not structuring your approach. Throwing framework buckets at your interviewer is desperately hoping to get any relevant information from the interviewer that you can then use to guess yourself through the case and hope it will be enough in the end. So properly structuring your approach means to clearly explain to the interviewer how you're going to arrive at an answer to the precise question that he or she has asked, right? So in simpler words, a structure is a logic and it is the logic according to which you will invariably arrive at the answer to the question asked, right? And this is the reason why you would need to understand the context of the client, right? And also you need to be aware of the nuances of it. So again, this is not university, right? So in university, it might have been enough to learn and replicate things. And, and, and it might be a good idea to learn with as many old exams as there are available in order to increase the chances to get a similar question in the upcoming exam. However, in a case interview, um, you could get literally any question, right? So make sure to build a rigorous logic to approach the case question and also have a discussion with the interviewer to make sure he or she is able to follow your approach. Lesson four, it is not about cracking the case. It is about being perceived as a superior problem solver. So there is so much advice around cracking the case, right? But your interviewer is not primarily assessing if you have cracked the case or not, right? So one comment here, there is often not even the one right solution, right? You need to come up with. What is way more important, way more important, is that you are perceived as a systematic and rigorous problem solver. Because this will give the interviewer the confidence that you would be able to essentially answer any possible strategic question that he or she could have given to you, right? And not only the one that was asked by chance um, at this very day from this very interviewer. So, what does this now mean in terms of behaviors that you would need to show? And um, let me summarize it like this. So first, you would need to navigate through the case based on a clear logic, right? So as opposed to the arbitrary buckets, which you pull from a standard framework. Second, um, you would need to execute, execute analyses um, with a clear picture in mind of what you actually want to test and how your answer to the main question will depend on the outcome of this test. So in other words, you will set up and conduct your analyses based on defined criteria that is aligned with your interviewer. And third, you always show crystal clear transparency regarding which analysis is required and why the results will help you to solve the explicit question asked, right? So again, it's not about finding the one right answer to a case. It is about finding one possible answer to the client's question. And while doing so, the core quality you need to show is that you have a rigorous and repeatable thinking process, which allows you to reliably cut through the questions right to the core. And this cannot be shown by learning lists and facts, right? It can only be shown in a methodical way by applying top-down logic and the behaviors I have just outlined for you here. Lesson five, nearly all outperforming candidates we saw in the last decade had three things in common. First, they understood the fundamentals. Second, they received senior calibration on their performances. And third, 
they had access to and practiced with top peers. So let me explain what I mean with this. So with regards to one, right? So they understood the fundamentals. Um, it is really important to understand what exactly is expected from you in these interviews. So what are the criteria that you will be evaluated against? Why are the criteria as they are? And also how you can show these criteria in the moment of truth, right? So you will get an outstanding evaluation. And there is a huge, a huge information overflow online. And it is really hard to differentiate for candidates in between information that is actually accurate and helpful and information that is plain wrong and harmful. So do your research on the information you find and please make sure if the authors of this information really know what they are talking about. So have there been officially trained interviewers? Have they seen hundreds of successful MBB candidates or have they only been working there um, for one or two or maybe three years, right? Or even worse, only have done an internship there. Second, they received senior calibration. And at some point in time, usually the earlier, the better, you will need to understand your current performance level under real life conditions. And it is simply just not enough to know theoretically what is expected um, because you also will need to do, right? And you must do things right. So this calibration is a little bit tricky as you need to have access to resources that can offer extensive experience in the area that is tested to actually help you with providing directional feedback that you then would need to incorporate in, in order to excel at the criteria tested. So it will just not be enough to, to, to copy the approach of others by listening to some videos or audio performances, right? The truth is the bar you will need to meet is the same for everybody. However, the learning journey in order to meet this bar is very individual as you will bring your own strength and own weaknesses with you. You just have a different starting point, right? And only someone who has actually interviewed a couple of hundred candidates within an MBB as an officially trained interviewer for this firm, right? And who has discussed these candidates with other interviewers doing the decision meetings, only such a person can provide the right level of calibration. And this simply cannot be done by random people you find on the internet to practice with, right? And also not even by junior MBB consultants you might know, because they will only be able to tell you what they believe has worked for them. But this is far from unleashing your full potential. So what you should do is try to get as much exposure as possible to senior consultants, right? And please start with at least the manager levels. And third, um, these candidates had access and exercise with top peers, right? So in order to get to a continuous performance along the criteria that you will be evaluated on, you will need to practice, practice, practice. And you need to do that in an environment with peers that um, at best are of highest quality and also challenging, right? Um, uh, by, but also at the same time, helping each other on their way to excellence together. So please make sure that also your peers share the same understanding on what is tested for in these interviews and be also be completely sure to ask them on what they should watch out for you for um, doing your performances, right? Because otherwise you're just practicing and internalizing and scaling the wrong things over and over again. And it should be pretty clear that this is not leading you to a successful outcome. So, um, I mean, we have just condensed a couple of thousand data points into, into five core lessons, right? So make sure to use this information wisely and good luck with your upcoming interviews.